Good afternoon everybody. Welcome to the Road Trade Association Convention of 2021. I've been given the graveyard shift, but hopefully with the topic under discussion, um, I will be able to get you through this shift um, and you'll enjoy your welcome lunch break afterwards. I'm here today to talk to you around the Border Management Act and the Border Management Agency and the importance and impact that this act and the agency could have on cross-border trade. So I think it is critically important that we firstly look at the contents um, which, against which we are um, evaluating the Act. Um, and the context of this is the Africa Free Trade Agreement. So if we look at the Africa Free Trade Agreement, it is really an attempt to deepen the economic integra integration on the continent. It is a game changer. If this works, we will end up with the largest free trade area in the world. It is already the, the largest free trade area by countries. And currently the phase two negotiations of the um, act has already been completed in January 2021. And they are starting now with the phase three negotiations. And that's a critical milestone that has been achieved. If one then have to look at the Africa Free Trade Agreement versus the BMA approach, one has to ask the question whether these two pieces of major le legislation are actually aligned or whether they are out of step. And I would like to clarify during the presentation. If one looks at the Border Management um, Authority, maybe some background. South African borders are currently being managed by several departments. There's actually 58 different laws that govern um, the border area. And in 2013, a decision was made to look at actually streamlining the current fragmented system into one um, siloed approach. And the idea was to actually combine the various departments under one centralized border management authority. And that border management authority will look after all 72 ports of entry um, into and out of South Africa. It's also going to have one command structure and one governance structure. The bill was actually passed by the National Assembly in 2017, but it was um, it actually was embroiled in great opposition. And the biggest crux of the opposition was um, who would look after this um, piece of legislation and also which parties must be included under the legislation. The Act was eventually promulgated in July 2020, um, and that set the background and the tone which we must look at um, now going into the future. What do they try and aim to achieve with the Act? Is really that they, they want to ensure that there is one governing structure, um, a single implementing entity under a single executive authority. And then they hope that this will enable seem seamless border environment, which both for people and trade would facilitate the movement across the country with efficiency and speed, focus on tourism, trade in and out of the country, and naturally also a job creation element. Now this all sounds good. Um, furthermore, what they want to achieve is to make sure the South African borders are secure, um, that the stakeholders are coordinated within the border environment. And they've set quite an aggressive implementation plan to get the Act agreed. It was eventually conceded that the um, Border Management Agency will fall under the Department of Home Affairs. And Home Affairs and National Treasury was given six months to actually come up with the engagement protocols and the implementation protocols which means that deadline was in January of this year, and unfortunately the deadline has not been met. In addition, there would be a parliamentary committee that will exercise oversight over the engagement and ensure the implementation of the Act. So we're already on the back foot as it stands at the moment because we are behind. Um, the departments that will be um, included under the Border Management Agency is people like the National Defence Force, the Department of Public Works, Home Affairs, Environmental Affairs, um, Agriculture, the Police Force, with one exception, and that is SARS. SARS will be independent from the BNA and will also uh, continue to fulfill their functions in terms of the Customs and Excise Act 91 of 1964, or hopefully 
under the new Act um, when that gets promulgated in the near future. So the next steps for the BMA is really a pilot phase. They want to do each border post, so they were looking at Oshuk, um, Port of Cape Town, and then ORT for air. And because the bill was already signed into law, um, and when you look at the legislation, you'll see that it is one of the most complex restructuring exercise of a government that has been done in South Africa from the inception of um, the new uh, government. And um, it doesn't bode well that they are already behind at the moment with the deploy um, deployment plan having to be published by the 21st of January. Um, that deadline has been missed. What is also very, very important to note is the staggering, staggering cost that has been associated with this particular bill. The initial phase is estimated to cost um, 3.8 billion rand a year. The total cost will be 10.3 billion rand a year when fully implemented. And the target date is 2032 to have it fully implemented. The estimate is that there will be 21,000 people employed after the full implementation of the Act. But one has to weigh it up and really look at what is going to be the benefits um, and ultimately whether um, the emphasis of the Act is on trade or it, whether it would be on the security aspects. What is also important is the establishment of the Border Management Authority that must employ the various border officials there has to be a ministerial consultative committee, a border technical committee, and also an advisory committee. This will all fa fall under the function of home affairs, as mentioned before, and Sa SARS and home affairs will actually have to coordinate and work together in a structured manner to ensure that SARS can fulfill their mandate and the Border Management Authority can fulfill their mandate simultaneously. BMA introduces new terms, and this is where the real concern around this Act comes in. It refers to a border law enforcement area, which will be, has been defined as a radius of 10 kilometers from a land sea border area. It will entail the introduction of a border guard, which is deemed to be a peace officer with the accompanying rights. So it is now really looking that the armed border guard with law enforcement capabilities will be operating within this border law enforcement area. And as I mentioned, the interministerial consultative committee and um, the various departments that must be coordinated under the single body. It's a real challenge to get these various departments to just start working together. Other concerns in terms of the Act is that these border officials will be able to, with or without a warrant, exercise, um, execute some duties. In other words, they will be able to enter premises, for example. They will be able to look at your vehicle. They'll be able to seize vehicles and goods um, without a warrant, which is quite a different scenario to what we currently have, where people that want to execute tasks like that do need warrants and will have to have gone through due process. This aspect of the Act is really concerning and it has not been clarified exactly how this will be implemented. Further concerns is the Department of Home Affairs has not been um, acknowledged as one of the most efficient departments um, currently within the government structures. There's severe management problems and there has been management and operational problems within this department for a very, very long time. It's a very costly act, as I mentioned, um, and it's going to also place huge budget constraints, not only on the Department of Home Affairs, but also on the fiscus in, in general. The coordination between SARS and the BMA, my question really has been, who's the boss? If you get a stop and detain within a border area um, that the BMA has done, and then SARS's risk engine identifies a stop and detain you probably within um, the space of two or 20 meters within a border post, you, could, you would be stopped twice. There's a huge skills and expertise um, level that is required to execute the BMA roles and responsibilities. This is also questionable whether we do have the skills and expertise available currently. 
and also industry participation and insight into the bill since it came into effect has been severely lacking. Now, when I started, I spoke about the Africa Free Trade Agreement, and the Africa Free Trade Agreement is actually working towards getting progressive border agendas, free trade areas, and free movement. And it seems South Africa is stepping back and moving to a more militarized border environment. And this could be seen as non-tariff barriers, and it will hamper trade. If one now looks at the impact on cross-border logistics, the concern is that it will introduce a new layer of bureaucracy, potentially more delays and a negative impact on trade. The focus of the bill is very much on security and other matters and not so much on trade facilitation. Trade facilitation doesn't fall under the ambit, neither is it a priority for the Department of Home Affairs. Um, private sector as a partner so far has been silent. Um, we don't know whether that bodes um, well for the future. And then very importantly, if one looks at the current customs set up within South Africa, you will see that customs are actually, um, from a technological point of view, quite advanced. And a lot of the procedures of the WCO is very, very well embedded within the customs processes. We already do advanced cargo declaration. Um, we already do advance manifest declaration and the level of cargo and manifest declaration on the road movements is as high as 99.98% as confirmed by SARS in a recent review of the strategic plan. SARS is already looking at big data and anal analytics. They already have risk profiling. They are now moving towards more modernization activities and also They've already implemented customs to customs connectivity and programs like the approved economic operator or the AEO program. These instruments are WCO and customs instruments. None of the, these instruments are prevalent or recognized by the other departments that has been incorporated under the BMA. And that's a concern because are we really going to go forward or are we stepping backwards? Trade facilitation is not a focus, as mentioned before, and that's a real concern. And if you look at trade facilitation against security and border control, you are really talking about the left and the right hand. It's two opposing forces, and which force is eventually going to conquer and allow trade to flow. If you look at BMA in the future, um, other concepts that's being introduced by the BMA is one-stop border post, um, there's also talk about single window. Now really, if you look at the concept of one-stop border post, this concept has been around for a very, very long time. But the real question that one has to ask is whether one-stop border post is really needed. Um, it's astronomical levels of investment and expenditure. And with all the technology advancements that's happened in the, um, over the last few years, and especially the digitization campaigns that have been launched as part of the COVID um, period, a lot of things, innovative technology um, um, solutions, including blockchain solutions, smart borders, risk management, trusted partners, all of these concepts can actually alleviate the need for the BMA and the one-stop border post and really look at a, a concept around smart borders instead of one-stop borders. We don't really want to stop at the border, we want to flow through. So the answer is yes, we can achieve these objectives by more taking a more innovative approach. And the appeal and the call to action that I'm really making is that we should mobilize and participate now in the discussion. We should actively contribute and engage. Join associations like the Road Freight Association to collectively raise your concerns um, in our attempts to engage with industry from an industry perspective with government and that our voices can be heard to ensure that trade can flow and we won't be hampered and constrained by the implementation of the new act. Um, I've put up my contact details so if anybody's got any questions or any contact details welcome to reach out to me or alternative I, I will be available for some Q&A after this session. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the conference and your lunch and your dinner tonight. Thank you.